Hello there, my name is Ismaus and uh, this is part two of our uh, making a satellite in Blender 2.8, a satellite weapon in Blender 2.8. And uh, so we're going to begin off by making uh, the satellite itself. We're going to keep the model very simple uh, using primitive meshes. Uh, so we start with a mesh uh, a mesh circle and uh, you can see I added the smooth, uh, uh, smooth shading so that I can keep the surface rounded without using a lot of polygons. And I duplicated the uh, the circle and um, then scale down a few of the polygons uh, to make different shapes uh, just following the uh, the the reference image that you see at the top right uh, you can also find another any reference image of a satellite that you want to use and follow that but uh, you don't really have to follow what I'm doing exactly I just have to get the concept and then create whatever you want uh, from there uh, here I'm just adding a few uh, details by scaling and ma and uh, uh, scaling and extruding uh, basically moving the polygons are around uh, these are very basic things uh, in uh, three in in modeling uh, that uh, can really be easy to, to figure out so I'm not going to use any a uh, subdivision surface because I want to keep the project very light and uh, with very few polygons with a very few polygon count so instead of using the subdivision surface where I want more detail I'm, I'm using the uh, bevel modifier and uh, and uh, the smooth surface uh, to make <coughs> to make sharp areas uh, look sharp. Uh, just here, I'm just adding uh, supporting uh, loops uh, to make to reduce uh, that uh, that smooth uh, shading uh, on the edge on in some parts where it should be sharp. Uh, as you can see, mostly at the edges, I'm adding supporting polygons to make that shading look sharp. Uh, here, because I wanted to add a uh, detail that was going to be repeated, uh, I'm using the mirror modifier to to just model one part and then uh, mirror everything else in the X and Y uh, axis uh, so that uh, the mirror modifier can help me model that detail in. Uh, you can add uh, small details like this to make your set like more convincing uh, without using a lot of polygons. I can see here I added supporting, I, I used uh, the bevel weight. Uh, I have tutorials on how to use the bevel weight and the bevel modifier. Uh, you can just go to my channel as uh, in the video section and uh, find uh, some details like that. So if you wanted to do what I did there, I just did there, you can just select two edges or vertices and and hit down and, and use the shortcut Control B to bevel those edges. If you want to bevel a vertex, you just hold down Shift, a uh, Control Shift, and then B to bevel uh, a, a vertex. But here we we'll bevel. We wanted to bevel uh, the edge. That's that's why I was using a uh, Control Shift uh, to bevel that. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to reduce some of the end guns, uh That end gun uh, that you see there, uh, but it doesn't really matter that much because I'm not going to deform. Uh, the object itself, uh, the satellite itself. I'm just going to animate the entire thing at once. So, uh, end guns are, are not that won't matter that much there. But I, since I could remove them easily, I I did that. Uh, so yeah, this is what we have so far. <coughs> now I'm just adding very few uh, some simple uh, details here. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just making uh, something. You see what I'm doing, but uh, I'm creating this profile that I will use as as a boolean object uh, to cut out pieces. Uh, like I don't know how how you can call them. Maybe libits. I don't I don't know how they're called, but uh, yeah. So you're going to see me here using that as a as a boolean object, and uh, since I wanted that to repeat, I will, I'm, I'm, I'll be using uh, the spin object. Or the spin tool uh, to rotate to duplicate uh, that part uh, into other per into uh, into a circular uh, thing. You see me do it there, but uh, here I'm just uh, setting up the boolean. I I'm using I think I use the difference or union. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I'm just adding a few details there. And uh, I changed the display of the object, uh, the boolean object, to wireframe so that I can easily see uh, what I'm, I'm cutting out uh, without the object itself getting in the way. And uh, I'm just duplicating the same thing and uh, flipping it the other side uh, to make another boolean object uh, that I can use to add more detail uh, to the mesh. So you, you'll see me in a second. 
applying the boolean i think i am just i just did that uh, so you can see the shape we have now and uh, so uh, the, the, the problem with boolean is that uh, it will mess up your shading mostly if you have uh, smooth shading turned on or if you have uh, the subdivision surface a subdivision yes subdivision surface modifier on it will mess up your mesh a bit it will mess up your mesh a bit uh, so i'm just doing some cleanup here and uh, reducing some of the end guns uh, that uh, that are causing uh, that stretching in the shading uh, to see how I can get it to look correct. So this, the, the best solution I, f I, I finalized with was uh, using uh, the smooth by angle, I think it's called auto smooth uh, in, the, in the mesh data. Uh, that, that made it very easy. You see me doing it in a second because I tried uh, change, removing the end gun. I can see now I've just used it there, auto smooth uh, to clear out <coughs> that a shading artifact and I can see even without um, without uh, fixing the end gun issue I can see that uh, the small thing is corrected. Uh, here I'm using the spin tool to duplicate uh, to, to make an array of duplicates uh, of uh, the mesh I've just made here uh, so I had to fix a few issues before I use uh, that uh, so that all the vertices are, are aligning correctly uh, so that when it comes to removing uh, devils, they can easily be removed. Uh, so here I'm just using the spin tool again and uh, checking the duplicate uh, spin using duplicates uh, to get uh, to only duplicate to only sp make copies of the duplicate. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but uh, yeah. So this is what we have. I think I've already removed uh, doubles now. And, uh, now I'm just trying to clean up uh, the mesh a bit. Again, I used, I uh, think, a mirror modifier. No, I didn't use a mirror modifier here, but uh, I'm now adding a few details and uh, also using uh, the auto smooth on some areas. And uh, again, I'm using the mirror modifier to help me make uh, the, dip, the, dip, the details uh, that are going to be repeated on the other side. Yeah, so you can choose whatever detail you want to use. Uh, don't, you don't necessarily have to follow my uh, kind of detail, detailing. So, yeah, here I used uh, the bridge. If you right click, if you select two faces or more than two faces and uh, that are facing directly each other, uh, you, uh, you, can, uh, you can right click and you will get the option bridge faces as long as you are in face, face mode and you can bridge uh, those faces uh, to connect them like you, like you saw me do there. Uh, so here I'm just adding a few more details again. Nothing that much. And I think I added a circle here. But I wanted to keep the mesh connected. So uh, you see me delete uh, that middle face uh, there and the bridge uh, the polygons uh, together. And now I'm just deleting uh, those triangles. Uh, deleting the middle triangle, the middle edge uh, that is creating a triangle between that uh, polygon. And uh, the way you delete that is uh, if you hold down control while you, and then hit X, you can delete only uh, the vertex or, or edge uh, that you have selected. And I think I was happy with the detail there. Maybe I added a, another detail here. Just keeping it simple like that and uh, extruding in. Uh, so here, instead of uh, adding loops uh, to, to create that crisp edge, uh, to create that sharp edge, I just turn the selected edges into bevel weights and then use the bevel weight modifier to make them uh, to do exactly the same thing uh, that uh, adding extra loops would do. Uh, but here you have the option to, to undo that easily uh, without having a lot of trouble, uh, without do using a lot of steps. So I'm, I'm again... Again, here I'm just adding a few steps and uh, maybe rounding off uh, some parts. And I think here uh, the vertices we are, were intersecting too much, so I decided to just do it uh, for the bottom part, and I think it looked even more interesting like that. Again, to bevel, you just hold on Control B. 
and then drag at bevel the edges you have selected. So now I'm just using the mirror modifier to duplicate uh, to make uh, the copies repeat uh, what I've done repeat on other sides and uh, yeah so just adding a few interesting details uh, to the set light they may not even be visible uh, in the final thing because of how far the, uh, the camera will be from the from the set light itself but uh, they can be very important uh, mostly if you're going to make uh, close-up shots and sometimes you don't really know what is going to show up or what is not going to show up yes so here i'm just also adding a few more details here and now let's make uh, those uh, solar panels they're very simple i just uh, i just created a mesh and to make to turn those uh, rectangles into into triangles i just hit t ctrl t uh, to add that middle edge uh, to create triangles and now i'm just mir mirroring that on the other side like that so this is our first panel i wanted to keep it very simple uh, because you can also see in the reference image how that is really simple as well and uh, here I'm trying to use the array modifier to make copies of this. So, uh, but because of, I want to animate uh, those uh, panels as well, I instead chose to remove the array modifier. You'll see me do it in, the, in, in maybe another part uh, so that it's easy for me to animate because you can't really animate uh, the array modifier to in the same way that I wanted the panel to, to fold. Uh, so, yeah, you'll see me change uh, that a bit in a bit maybe we'll get, when we get to the animation part you'll see me do it i'm just trying to add a few more details so i don't think i do anything that unique here uh, after this so i'll let how uh, the tutorial uh, the time lapse continue playing and i'll see you in the next tutorial uh, also if you want to get the project files um, you can go to my Patreon page, that is patreon.com uh, forward slash top channel one on one and you can download the project files directly there and uh, yeah that way you can uh, look at the project and see how I did everything or uh, maybe if you want to follow the tr along with the tutorial you can look at uh, what I'm doing and uh, look at how it came out in the project itself and also that way you can, it's, it's another way to support me and uh, and uh, enable me uh, to make uh, these cool tutorials like this so yeah i'm just continuing and adding in a few details here that i think might be interesting and you can see now uh, this i'm just adding uh, from my head it's not uh, exactly what uh, the reference image looks like uh, but i thought that uh, uh, this would be a cool addition and uh, this is a, a weapon set light and uh, the reference image I don't think is a, a weapon set light and uh, I don't I don't even think we have their set lights that are uh, weaponized in uh, in the real world uh, so you can use your imagination to do whatever you want here uh, no one should be able to tell you that uh, it's not how it that's not how it looks because no one know, no one has ever seen a weaponized a set light uh, in my opinion so yeah, I'm just adding a few details here, but uh, yeah, let me let you watch uh, this part and I'll come back in the next part uh, to explain uh, that area. Okay, thank you.